Hi guys, can you hear me okay? Um, so, first of all, myself, my name is uh, Alex Besanov. I'm a CEO and founder of uh, Bitclave, a blockchain company. Uh, I uh, have about 25 years experience of uh, 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 software engineering, worked in, primarily in security and privacy, uh, with um, a lot of experience really around security. Uh, my last uh, position was a chief security officer at LG Electronics, where I was running a security organization and uh, focused on uh, a lot of uh, IoT uh, devices and also uh, security of uh, uh, other uh, 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 electronics that were produced by LG. And uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, data privacy and security and the title of my presentation, Who is in Charge uh, of Our Lives? Um, I started to work on this presentation maybe about a month ago, and as the time progressed, uh, every single thing that I'm talking here becomes more and more a reality. And when I started, I was thinking about this more of kind of a futuristic talk, uh, but really now with uh, Facebook facing this uh, uh, grilling on a hill, and just today um, I was listening to Mark Zuckerberg talking to, uh, to the US government, I think uh, we're seeing very rapid development uh, in this uh, topic. So I wanted to start with um, a history of uh, data. If I figure out how to do this thing. So the history of uh, human relationship goes back at least 12,000 years. Uh, when people uh, were uh, working uh, and uh, living in, in completely different environment, than now, and uh, they established a very different relationship uh, among themselves. Uh, initially, they were, uh, people were organized in tribes, and there were really small groups of people, uh, usually hunting together, protecting each other, uh, with a small hierarchy, but really uh, growing as kids together and uh, uh, considering everybody outside of the tribe to be an enemy. And that was a status quo for quite a while, uh, and people helped each other. Uh, as uh, the evolution uh, uh, progresses, progress, people start to get together more closely, and the tribes start to get uh, into communities, uh, and uh, people start to build some sort of hierarchy, a, a big, better hierarchy, where you have people, rich people, you have poor people. Uh, rich people usually are educating their kids in very uh, uh, traditional uh, manner and the poor are always looking up. Uh, at this point already people start to share some knowledge uh, how to, uh, to uh, uh, communicate with each other and start to share data amongst different uh, communities. With uh, democracy and globalization things start to change even more. Uh, people start to open up uh, we start to communicate with each other outside of our normal routine where we just talk to uh, people inside of a small community. We start to reach out uh, to maybe other countries. Uh, still, there was a lot of privacy around our data. Uh, when uh, you walk into a, a store, for example, you don't immediately say, hey, uh, I was looking for a dishwasher yesterday. Here's all my data. Talk to me. So people were still uh, very uh, uh, private and very uh, uh, discreet about uh, their lives. About 25 years ago, internet came about, and boy, things started to change very rapidly. So at first, if you remember, there was a mosaic, uh, a first browser where people were able to browse internet and look for uh, different websites, different things. Uh, primarily, people were showing off on the internet, maybe building some initial websites. Uh, email was a very big thing. Uh, for the very first time, we were able to communicate with our relatives, friends, even some strangers. Uh, we started to get some emails that would uh, offer us some products. And if we click on these mails, we would get even more offers. So kind of first spam started to appear. But still, it was very, very uh, early in days. Then was uh, MySpace, for those who remember, it's a very Wild West type of uh, JavaScript, crazy uh, sharing, everything is uh, available, people just uh, 
disrespect their own privacy and share everything with everybody without uh, even thinking about it. And then Google came about, and Google was a really big game changer. So Google created this new paradigm where you're able to search on the internet and you can find things very rapidly. The speed was amazing, the quality was amazing, and we felt like, well, finally we have uh, some really good use case for internet, and we kind of have like a browser, a browser who doesn't know us very well, but still knows a lot of answers, so we can always come to Google and ask uh, uh, if we have questions about math, or you know, if you're looking for a car. Uh, obviously, if you're looking for a car, Google started to push a little bit more things towards us, and if you remember 2003, uh, the AdSense uh, appeared. Uh, back then it was called differently, but nevertheless that was the first advertisement on the internet and it was uh, kind of cool. We, you know, we started to notice that uh, we are being pushed some things that we didn't ask for, uh, but we didn't mind really because we didn't pay any money for that. Uh, and you know, wh why not? And then 2004 Facebook came about and that was a huge change. So for the first time we started to push our data in a very direct way towards to, to internet. And Facebook took a completely different path. They said, share your data with us. Don't worry, we share it with your friends, right? We maybe share it with uh, some other people. Uh, later on, you know, we'll share it with businesses. And, you know, they will pay us, right? You don't worry about it, but that's all cool. Uh, and so, really, the, the industry of advertisement was born uh, at that time. It was the first time when uh, this uh, uh, juggernaut that we know of right now, of uh, I think it's a half a trillion dollar business, uh, started to kick off. YouTube was acquired in 2006 by Google, and I remember back then I was looking at the acquisition and thinking, why is it $1.7 billion? That sounds like a lot of money. Uh, I guess now we all know the answer. Back then it was really hard to predict what's going to happen. And then kind of fast forward in 2018, uh, we are in the world of self-driven cars. Uh, we, for those who watch um, uh, Black Mirror, uh, specifically episode Metal Hat, that talks about the future of uh, humanity when uh, uh, rob robots like dogs appear and uh, kind of capture the world. Uh, these things become in uh, reality more and more. And guess what? Everything here is driven by data. And as the previous speaker was mentioning, it's about uh, big data, about analytics, and machine learning, right? And who powers all this? Well, that's our data. So I have a seven-year-old daughter, and she is a first grader. Uh, she is uh, learning really fast. Uh, she uses uh, her iPad quite a lot. Uh, she started to use iPad uh, a few years ago. And uh, recently I realized that she knows a lot of things that I, I had no idea about. And specifically I found her that she was playing a game called Roblox, which I knew about, but I never told her to play this game, so she installed it because Google offered her this. And you know, Google was very convincing, specifically YouTube, right? She doesn't really go to Google. But YouTube that she was watching told her about this really cool game. Later I discovered that she was watching Twitch and she was watching other kids playing, uh, playing this game. Which was amazing because, uh, again, this is all happening kind of in the background of our lives. And we don't really realize that Google becomes a real parent of our kids. So while we are working, we are, you know, we are trying to make sure that our kids are growing up well and we support them, our kids are being taught by, by this corporation. And while Google, do, Google doing that, they show, you know, obviously have some good uh, intentions. They don't really know my daughter very well. And by the way, this is not my daughter. This is just a stock image of a, a, a seven-year-old girl. But this is how Google sees my daughter. They average her profile and they build an image and then they educate this image uh, and, uh, and do whatever you know, they feel is important for them. So 10 years from now, my daughter will be 17. So, you know, as a parent, I will do everything I can to make sure that she grows well and she is smart and uh, knowledgeable. Uh, but if we continue with the same trajectory of internet as now, things will not get much better for us. Things probably will get slightly different and maybe worse. Our data will be used more and more. 
We all know about uh, security breaches, and when I was giving a talk about a year ago about security and privacy, back then there was not too many real big breaches that happened. Uh, about six months ago, I started to talk about Equifax, which was a very big breach. But man, things happened, a lot of things happened, right? Every day we, we discover something new. It was Uber, it was Facebook, at some point it was uh, uh, my service, uh, it was called uh, uh, my fitness pal, right? So 150 uh, million users were hacked. So things are progressing very well. Then uh, uh, the meddling in elections kind of all around the globe. And this all is driven by the data that being collected on us and being used by corporations. Google, Facebook, Twitter, it might be great companies, right? And, you know, obviously, Brim, Page, Zuckerberg, they all have really good intentions. But what they build, they build a centralized uh, monsters that cannot really be controlled anymore. They cannot be controlled by one government. They cannot be controlled by their own employees. Things are happening, and things are happening very fast. So the point of this talk is really, is there anything we can do? And I believe we can. I believe there is a time to change things. I believe this time is now. I think we, as a, as a human race, should start thinking more about data as something that is, you know, belongs to us and not to the big corporations or governments. We need to figure out how to protect this data, and we need to figure out how we can involve our communities, uh, teachers, uh, parents, to, to get our, our next generation more educated than we are and to get them to the point where they are not being driven by these corporations or governments but rather being developed by themselves. So we look at the blockchain as, as a central piece of, uh, of this technology. So when blockchain initially started was Bitcoin, the first truly decentralized currency and it was all about being, you know, big banks and kind of how we can uh, uh, change the world uh, with, with a new currency type. But then Ethereum came, out, came on the scene and Ethereum is really, I, I look at it as a blockchain 2.0. With smart contracts enable a lot of use cases that were not uh, possible before. And what blockchain really allows us is to build this uh, very powerful computation and storage that is immutable, that is, uh, doesn't belong to anybody, and something that you can do outside of Amazon Cloud, outside of Google, while maintaining this uh, scale and uh, building something very unique with it. So a few words about us, uh, BitClave. So we built a decentralized data platform, and uh, we started as a company that was uh, really focused on, uh, on uh, search, but also the privacy of the data. We believe that people deserve to keep their own data private, and people can keep their own data in, uh, protected by their own private keys. So kind of similar how a bit, uh, a Bitcoin does it, with a private key that protects your assets, in the same way you can protect your assets with uh, Bitclave, where the keys are owned by, by the user, and the user decides when and how he shares. So for example, if you walk to, into a store, you can share information with the owner of the store, but it's your information, you can decide what you share or what you don't share, right? And if you do share, you actually might get rewarded for that. So you get better service, you get better attention, and uh, something that uh, you, you can really uh, uh, benefit from. And same goes to your kids. Uh, you want your kids to respect the privacy of their data, you want to educate them that this data belongs to them. They don't just give it away to everybody. And as a parent, you should be able to help them when they grow to control it and make sure they don't just give it away uh, for free and being influenced by all these big corporations. So, in a summary, you know, I think it's very clear that if you think about the question who is in charge uh, of uh, our lives, it's actually us. So we are, we are the people, we own the data, and we have to, the right to keep the data for ourselves. So one more thing that I want to uh, uh, say today, 
uh, we uh, at BitClave, we just uh, launched a first product uh, in the search space called uh, DSearch. It's a crypto search engine that is used to search for anything crypto related. So you can use crypto search today uh, if you go to dsearch.com and you'll be able to find uh, anything that you are interested in the uh, crypto world. So it's, it's a project, it's an uh, ICO project, it's an uh, 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 interesting uh, company that you're looking for, or just to learn about the industry itself. Um, we believe that uh, as uh, people uh, start using it more and more, uh, there are going to be more features coming out, and the, more, the most important piece here is for us, and this is kind of connection to uh, what we do, is how we store your data and how this data is, belongs to you. So you see here in the corner, you'll see the login and sign up button, where if you log in, you log into your own vault, and this vault will actually keep your data secure with your private key. So we as a company have no access to your data, but if you decide to use it, then when you log in, you can share the data with advertisers and they will target, uh, target you directly. So this is our new product again. I uh, would like to ask you guys when you have a chance to check it out. Uh, we are still in the kind of in beta mode. Uh, the product is very fresh. We have a lot of great feedback about it. Uh, I think people like, like it. And from our side, this is the first product that we just released uh, on the search space. So we're going to add more and we're going to add more connection to the data privacy and security. Thank you.